NFL. We didn't talk as much last week. We were just wrapping up preseason. But now is the time to talk about the football season. It's finally here. Um, it's close as we're recording. We're not going to make a pick for that because we are recording on a Thursday. But before well, we get to the picks in the NFL, so you know, let's have I've a talk. NFL Network, and it looks like rain at the old uh, Lincoln oh. Financial Field in Philadelphia today. Cool. All right, everybody's playing in a dome from now on. Yeah, or at right. least a retractable roof. Retractable roofs. Uh, so before we get to these picks, let's talk about Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Uh, so now his offensive linemen are going after him on Twitter. He still hasn't reported to the team, holding out. Brent, you're in the front office of the Pittsburgh Steelers. What do you do? Um, it's a rough. It's rough at this point. Um, I think the thing that kind of gets to me, not from a front office standpoint, but from a standpoint as a teammate, it's honestly bullshit that he did not tell his teammates what his plans were at all. Like. His teammates, his offensive line, I, I think Ramon Foster flat out said it earlier this year or earlier this week when he decided not to report. You're literally going to sit out half the season, report, and still make more than I do this year. Right. Suck it the fuck up. Oh, yeah. I or making $14.5 million <laughs> this year. Like – we get it. You didn't get your contract. I obviously you want to get signed to a bigger contract, but tell your tell your offensive line, tell your teammates that you're not going to show up. Who cares? If that's your intention, then then that's your intention. Don't show up. Don't lead the team. Don't lead your teammates on to believe that you're going to be there. That's what they all thought. They all he told teammates that he was going to be there September first, Labor Day. He was going to be there to, to, to work out. Well, guess what? Pittsburgh has to try and figure out something else to do. Granted, it's good that they have a James Conner, but I think it's yeah. a, I think it's a shitty thing to do to your teammates. But I understand well, from a money standpoint. Well, how much of it do you think it's him? How much do you think of it's a little bit of his agent? I think a lot of it's him, but do you think a lot of it's also his uh Your agent can tell you whatever you want, but – you're the one making the decision. If your decision is that you don't want to play, and as of right now, the only thing that I can think of is he won't play until week 10. He wants to preserve yeah. his body to where yada, yada, yada. Well, guess what? Had you given us the intention that you want to preserve your body, you don't want to play that much, by all means, man, come in and play. James Conner can take half the snaps. Let it happen. At this point, I'd rather almost have James Conner on the field. I think maybe. Maybe these mind games, the issues that Pittsburgh's been having the last four or five years, maybe Le'Veon Bell's the problem. Yeah, I, I think as someone, you know, not, you know, just a football fan and not a Steelers fan, I think from the outside, it just doesn't make sense. It always seems to happen to this team. It, they have so much talent. I mean, there's no excuse why the Steelers shouldn't be the, the New England Patriots. Right, you know, there's no excuse why they shouldn't be in super multiple Super Bowls. I mean, yes, they have been, but I mean, under Mike Tomlin, they should be in multiple Super Bowls. They have been, so much talent been offensively, in, and two under Mike Tomlin, but they haven't been to a Super Bowl in eight years. They haven't even, and they shouldn't be. They've only or they made, should be. They've only made the AFC Championship game one time in the past eight years. Like well, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's insane. Like they don't win in the playoffs. It's just like they 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 like self implode. This past year, losing Ryan Shazier was a huge thing, but also that not, destroyed that defense. That, but it that also defense was, one of those, was not the same. It wasn't, but you have to find a way to beat a Jaguars team. You cannot let you cannot let Blake Bortles beat you. And Blake Bortles beat him. It wasn't Leonard Fournette. It was Blake no, Bortles. No, and that's the thing. Blake Bortles and that offense put up forty-five points. That's yep. unheard of in a playoff game at home. That's ridiculous. You, you have nobody to blame but the defense in that on that loss. Like that defense was the cause of that. 
Now, and I think and I I agree. A guy like Le'Veon Bell does not help this team, it, and I, I I don't get it. I don't understand how a team that's constantly as talented, you've got big pen, big Ben, then you go out and you get Mason Rudolph, so you're prepared for the future. You've got and Antonio Dobbs Brown, ends up winning, and then Josh Dobbs ends up winning the backup quarterback position. <laughs> which then is you nuts. have guys like. You have good tight. You have a good tight end in Jesse James. We have two like, good tight ends, and you got Juju Smith Schuster. So much talent, and it's just, there's just this one guy that's just really messing with your locker room. And I, I, I think at some point, uh, you got to get rid of him. You have to get rid of him. Hopefully, you can get a good deal with him. But they're not going. I mean, he's gonna sit, and Pittsburgh's gonna probably he's already just, got the tag. He has a tag. It is what it is. At this point, though, there's not a team that you can really trade him to to get anything back worthwhile because they know that we also have a shot to, to sign him in free agency next year. Also, you got to find somebody that has $14.5 million worth of cap space because the franchise tag, there's no signing bonus. It all goes right to the cap. So you got to find, you have to literally find somebody that's like, well, we'll give you this and hope that it gives them enough that has $14.5 million of the cap space. He's going to be a Pittsburgh Steelers for the rest of the year. He's probably going to play seven, or he's probably going to play six games. So, you know, is what it is. Bring him here. Bring him to Tampa. Bring him to the, bring him to the Bucks. We'll gladly take him. I'm sure you would. <laughs> I'm sure you would. But uh, I, I, so you you think it's going to be late in the season? You think it's going to be week ten? Week ten is the latest that he can report and still get paid for the year. So yeah, now, probably, paid for I the year. Just... Paid for the year means he's not going to get all of his money. And I mean, they can literally find him for not being at camp. He can find him for not being at work. Basically, they have to try and find a way. And the thing that sucks though is if this dude decides to sit there for ten weeks, they've got to find a way to put him. Like you can't just put him on the physically unable to perform. Like you got to figure out what, what, where to put. Do we? Yeah, you do can't we, put him on IR. Any, do, do we have a spot for him on the did not show up because he's an asshole move or like what do we have like it's it's a it's dumb it's a bad move also realize that he was gonna get his money and he just didn't get enough guaranteed and I get it you wanted guaranteed money but 15 million dollars a year and I quite a bit guaranteed I'm surprised he didn't take it but you know what's gonna happen Next year, he's signing a five-year deal for $20 million a year, at least annual average value. So, we'll see. Well, maybe maybe this brings his cost down. Maybe he stays with Pittsburgh because he's a dickhead. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he just wanted to get paid. So, Le'Veon, get your act together. 